podcast with Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen. My name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Season 5, Episode 29, Episode 209. How is it going, everybody? Oh, you know, just a regular old winter wonderland. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. You've got all the snow. <laughs> Not all of it. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty well dispersed. There's places that have more of it than we do, but we have a fair amount. Yeah. <laughs> so how much did you guys get? Because I know on Long Island, they got a foot. How much did you guys get in New York City? Probably about the same. They're saying 14 inches in places. And again, don't quote me on this because haven't been outside in a couple of days. But from what I can tell from our window, I wouldn't say it's more than like 10 or 12, but okay. it's like with the wind blowing between buildings, it's it's kind of, it's hard to get an exact number. So I think they usually go off of like what's in the parks. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. With the snow banks, they're like, let me find the highest one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I was like on the phone with my boss yesterday and I was like, well, judging by what's accumulated on my fire escape, I would say that we're at a probably a good uh, eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> then I got too heavy and fell off. So now I'm like, well, no, I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, it's funny because we got, we had wild weather as well. Obviously not snow, but we got a shit ton of rain and there's been a lot of mudslides. Part of um, Highway 1 uh, slid into the ocean. So that's cool. I saw that oh. in national news. I saw I saw it on the evening news the other day. Yeah. Apparently, I did not know storm this. Is the California storm that just kind of made its way and like got all this cold and snow in the Midwest. Mm. Holy moly. Makes storm. sense. Yeah. yeah. Weather, man. Weather. It's almost <laughs> like the climate is changing. I know. And it's like, it's whenever this happens, it's like in California, we're like, okay, well, on the one hand, we need the rain. The problem is if you've had massive forest fires and then you have a shit ton of rain all at once, then like it doesn't produce the desired effect. You get mudslides <laughs> and other things. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't actually get absorbed into the soil and yada, yada, yada. Not good. Yeah. Not great. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Cheers. You have your hot water. I have my LaCroix water. And uh, Amanda, what, what form of water do you have? It's, it's borderline room temperature. <laughs> it's, slightly warmer than, it's slightly cooler than room, room temperature. So, yeah. just how I like it. Yes. I have the hot water in this mug. Uh, I have the LaCroix and vodka in my glass because dry oh, January hey. is over. And um, Oh, hey. Oh, hey. We are February 2nd. We sure are. Um, I had a beer with dinner and then fell asleep uh, when it was time to put Zachary to bed before. So things are going smooth. <laughs> and then I ate a hand. You might have just been tired. You can't blame that on the beer. You don't know definitively. <laughs> Very true. I had a handful of marshmallows because we had the fire pits. So we got marshmallows. I had a lot of them, a handful, a lot, uh, to sugar up before coming down here. Um, and uh, here we are. <laughs> Great. <laughs> should, I, uh, should I share my story that I shared just before we hit record about my hot water? Yes. Okay. If you'd like One million percent. <laughs> okay. So uh, I've been really into the hot water lately, and I'm not sure why, because I don't like tea, and I don't like anything really in the hot water, but, like, I had some stomach issues, uh, what, like, what, was it, like, two weeks ago, guys? A week and a half ago? Two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. I, yeah, yeah, I would say about two, the past two weeks. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I had, like, some really bad stomach issues where just, uh, just the heartburn was really bad, and, like, I had this trapped gas, and I was really, really uncomfortable, and, like, it took several days of, like, the, you know, the uh, heartburn pill thingies to mm-hmm. like you know get purple it pill. what the purple yeah. pill one of them i don't know i got the generic target <laughs> brand one but like yeah. yeah it took several days before that like took effect and blah 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 blah. so anyway i read online like hot water and it actually did help so now i'm like super obsessed with just plain hot water and um i realized that makes me an old lady and earlier tonight <laughs> jay was like hey do you want to have a sexy time before you record and i was like sure uh let me just finish my hot water and he was like uh eh, just kidding the mood's gone <laughs> <laughs> I was like, never mind. I was like, all right. You know, we fought it at first uh, when when we started this show uh, back in the day, but I think we really are kind of moving into our cougarhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problems there. No, yeah, no. As long as everyone's good with it, yeah. yeah you know. Yeah. 
Well, the- um, I did. Speaking of sexy time, I did a fun thing over the weekend. Oh, oh my! <laughs> January, go up. January is t- <laughs> January is typically when we head up to San Francisco for Hump uh, Amateur right. Porn Film Festival. Right. Obviously, it's not happening this year in person, um, but they figured out how to do it live. Ooh. Yeah, I love these like virtual film festivals, man. Yeah, yeah. and it, so, so it's interesting because. Um, the whole concept is that people can be amateur porn stars for a night and nobody can record it. They destroy the videos afterwards. If they see you take out your phone, like your phone is confiscated. Uh, and so it's interesting because with this, like you're at home on Zoom, you know, technically somebody could have recorded something. So I don't know how they're dealing with that, but I'm really glad that they put it together anyway. And it was fun. Like we... um we actually got tickets to the opening night. Uh, Dan Savage was there, like, on Zoom. Uh, we were, like, the first ones to sign in. Um, so we got a shout-out. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, Look at you. Yeah. It was just really, yeah, it was really fun. Wait, um, Shani, did you get the different. Did you get the early bird shout-out? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all good. <laughs> um, but, no, it was it was really fun, and I did think the, the video selection was – a little bit different than maybe last year. It seemed like last year, I remember thinking that a lot of the videos were like not so amateurish. And there were a lot of like actual, you know, like people that make actual videos. Yeah. They probably, they probably went to film school. Right. And like, they, 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 have they make website. it professionally, but like they went to film school. Well, and they have like a website that's, you know, that they might be promoting at the end. Like, so, mm-hmm. you know, not, and, and that's, that's fine. Like it doesn't have to be 100% amateur, but also that's kind of also the idea. So anyway, um, it seemed, it felt like this year there were fewer of those kind of videos and maybe an uptick in like the real, the more amateur style ones. And yeah, it it was, um, it was nice. I did, Frank and I both thought there was a little bit less diversity than usual, Mm -hmm. Uh, but there was some like diverse aspects that were new. Um, for example, speaking of sign language, Amanda, which we were talking about beforehand off uh, off camera, there was a video that had ASL in it, which I'd never seen before. Oh, wow, that's before. awesome. So, yeah. That's really cool. I would be really curious how how that works because I feel like that could actually be like a really beautiful way to like – yeah, I'm just – I'm so intrigued by that. Yeah, and it wasn't um I don't like the the couple that was in it, the two people, I don't know if they were hearing or not. So I don't know like you know, there there was some talking also. So yeah, I don't know. It wasn't like a ton of like, you know, dialogue um, mm-hmm. or anything like that. But there were just like here and there. At first I was like, is she signing? And then I was like, Oh yeah, she's signing. And because there's subtitles also <laughs> telling me what she's saying. <laughs> so that was cool overall. Good experience. Um, two thumbs up. Do you guys remember me talking about the butter um, yes. toast? How could oh, we forget yeah. about the Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the people that submitted butter toast submitted a video this time, and I think that I know which one it is. Um, oof. So there were a couple of videos that were – I mean, and that's the whole point is, like, to see things that you wouldn't yeah. watch. Right. Yourself. Um, but there were also some, some, you know, really beautiful ones. So anyway, an, a nice well-rounded collection and it's running for, I don't, I don't know how long, but, um, if anyone's interested, you can watch it in the comfort of your own home. So I think tickets are like 25 bucks. Okay. Send me the link. I will put the link in the show notes and we can also put the link on, uh, the Facebook page, all the Facebook yeah. pages and maybe our Twitter if you want to, um, if we remember i don't know but send me the link i'll definitely put in the show notes um because that's really awesome and i would be interested in in watching it yes maybe i can and then we can talk about it yeah Yeah. maybe i can re-earn my sexy time (laughs) 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 only cold water (laughs) hey you just have to remind you just have to remind jay that the hot water helps with your tummy and the gas and all these things that like is just make you as a person sexier. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. really it's just helping. Yeah. Oh no, don't worry. I still got it. But regardless, um, <laughs> I got a lot of shit for the hot water. 
Oh, I will send you the link. It's I, I just looked it up. It's um, they're going to be streaming. They have dates from January 30th to March 6th. So awesome. People, you all. Uh, oh, OK, so this show will be out on February 5th. So you guys will get a good month of being able to do that. Oh, that's really exciting. We could like have a community yeah. sex festival. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> do it. Uh, which I guess brings me into talking about our brunch. Did we still want to do the brunch? Of course. Right. Yes. We when need we to <laughs> reach out to Ed and Christy, was it? Uh, I think so. To find out when is good for them on a weekend. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Let's get that. Let's get that done. That I'm sounds good. Um, I will and- say, um, as weird as this sounds to say, I m- won't necessarily be here on the weekend of um, the lo- the President's Day weekend. Oh, where are you going? Um, somewhere? We yeah. so we bought tickets last fall to this driving thing. It's a Stranger Thing, Stranger Things themed like drive through experience. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. So I think it's going to be really fucking cool. And we, we bought these tickets for because it's like right before my birthday and it's a long weekend. And we're like, when we bought the tickets, we we're like, oh, by then I'm sure things will be like, you know, getting way better. Like we might even be vaccinated. The thing is, it's 100 percent in your car. So mm. you don't you don't leave your car. So like oh, they have a the event itself is very yeah. safe, but it's in L.A. So the thought has been like, do we drive to the eye of the storm or right, right. not? And then. And then we're like, well, we'd have to like stay overnight in a hotel. But if, it, if we're just like in a hotel and we just like stay in the room once we get there and like order pizza. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's the like there's we've been kind of back and forth about it, but I think we'll probably end up going. So nice. that's why I'm not available that weekend. But I'm very excited to report back because it okay. sounds like a really yeah. cool bit. That, that does, does sound really super fun. cool. Yeah. Yeah. They, they have a lot of that drive up stuff here. So they did this drive up. um Christmas lights things. I mean, they did a gazillion of them around here. But this one particular one was put on by the Parks and Rec. And, you know, it was very popular. And there were people that were starting to point out that people were waiting to drive through this thing. Because they had, again, I think they do a Christmas thing every year. And it's usually a bicycle through thing. Um, But they couldn't do the bicycle thing this year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So they did, like, okay, we're going to adjust. We're going to do, like, drive through the main whatever stuff. And they have they have a million like farms and things that we've done Christmas lights at before, and I they were all doing drive through through. So I don't think the Parks and Rec thought this out properly, but this was in town instead of being further away, like most of them were. And uh, the wait to get in was like up to 120 minutes. So people started pointing out that. Well, this is not exactly great for the environment if we're all waiting in our cars no. with our right. children like because it's, and- it's December and we can't just turn the cars off. Right. Right. We have to, you know, keep it on for the heat and our children's entertainment. So oh, they no. ended up having to cancel it like the week. So I think the last day they did it was Christmas Day and they were supposed to go through like January 6th, like most things. And they just <laughs> canceled it on like the 26th and they were like, we're going to refund everybody. <laughs> this is oh, so bad for oh, the environment. They yeah. tried. They, they tried. wanted to do something fun. <laughs> they tried plans. so hard. This is why we can't have nice things. Exactly. I get, I don't think they realize, I think their bike thing no. got like a decent amount of people, but not nearly that. And they didn't realize like you're in town, all the cool things are 45 minutes away for most people. Yeah. So of course they're yeah. going to go to the one thing that's like yeah. five minutes away. <laughs> right, right. But anyway, um, Shandy, you talked about your birthday. This is my last podcast as a 36 year old. That's true. How do you feel? Mm, sort of old, but I'm going to drink my hot water and be okay. <laughs> <laughs> and odd numbers are better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I like even numbers. Oh, I like even numbers better, oh. but you know. I think as we determined, we ha- we haven't had great luck with even numbers lately. Also, I'm well, totally... I suppose so. I suppose yeah. so. I think I have to call this episode um, Hot Water and Vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'll have a vodka hot tonic, please. Oh. Um, <laughs> pool boy is here refilling my water. Oh. oh, Thank you, pool boy. That was very nice of you. This is like the door opened, and I was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> but not you're not sitting next the to the window behind me. 
Like, You're not sitting service. next to the window to get kidnapped anymore. Right, right. The window is behind me. I don't have the distraction of the window, but the door is right there. So it's like, I hear, it's like, <laughs> I think I heard it too, sort of in my periphery. <laughs> yeah, right. it's a little squeaky. I think we're going to have to WD-40 that door. It's a oh, if squeaky. that's a baby's room, you will a gazillion percent WD-40 <laughs> that door. Yeah, it's it. All, everything is squeaky in here. So we've been like systematically going through. and Yeah. Well, cool. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to. No, I, I'm sorry. You, you were talking about something very important. Not important. And I interrupted. Yeah, I don't even remember. I was talking about hot water and vodka and birthdays. The end. Episode title. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Possible. Possibly. I mean, we'll we've got goes. we got a whole like hour of episode coming up. There could That's be true. lots we're, of fun things. We can accidentally stumble upon a Wikipedia page full of anatomy. I mean, you just don't know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know where the night's going to take us. <laughs> Yeah, Zach's going back to school on the 15th, and I truly cried with relief tonight. <laughs> I mean, it's been a, it's been a, a long, it's, it's, it's been what, a week and a half of him being home, and it's been, it's, it's been worse than before. It, it's just been really awful. Cause he doesn't pay attention. Uh, he wants to, he's always asking, when can I watch TV? And you're like, if you ask me again, you can't get TV. And then he's like, but when can I watch it? I'm like, okay, well, now you don't get it. And like, you know, it's just, <laughs> and then he does it. And then like that whole two hours in between break, he's like, but what can I do now? And I'm like, all the toys that you were trying to play with when your teacher asked you to pay attention, why don't you just go play with those toys? Like, oh, I'm so bored. So Zachary has created a, um, there was a, a box that came, oh, gosh, last week it was from eBay, Amazon, something, but it was like a big box that got to, oh, no, 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 my aunt and uncle sent us uh, Christmas presents belatedly, and so it was a big box, and he has taped it up, put a blanket and a stuffed animal in there, and he calls it his alone time box. Oh, my God, I love this. That's great. And, like, today he was so upset that the TV got turned off and he – or that he couldn't have TV that he went upstairs, slammed the door of his room and, you know, was like, I'm blah, 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 man, blah, blah, blah. And I go up there after – I'm trying – it's – it's you know, I'm in my busy month. January, February, October are my busiest months. Like, I don't have time to, like, do much in these months. So – I like even even working from home. So I take the time. I go upstairs after about 15 minutes and I'm thinking he's like locked the daughter's room or whatever. But the door opens thinking he's on his bed. Sometimes he hides under the covers to play. He's not on the covers. And I'm like, I'm like, all right, well, I guess he left the room and he's somewhere. So, you know, I go about my business. I go to the kitchen. I'm like, "Hmm, maybe I'll make some toast with uh, everything seasoning on top because that's my new favorite thing is toast with everything seasoning on top. The best. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So I go, I make that. Jay comes up because he's got a break from work. I'm like, hey, where's Zach? And he was like, he's up here, isn't he? And I was like, no. He's like, oh, well, he's not downstairs, but I'm sure he's somewhere. And I go back into the room and this fucking alone time box is sitting in front of the door. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all time calling for him. I he doesn't even like say anything, and he's like huddled up in this stupid little box. And I open it, and you know, I rip the tape off, and he's like, "You broke my box," and he starts telling on me to Jay. He's like, "Mommy broke my box," and I'm like, "Oh my god, you're gonna be the worst teenager." <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, they're back. Uh, God, I hope they stay back because it's just been like he's under the table. They do breakout groups. He doesn't participate in the breakout groups. He's like the worst group member where I'm always like, you have to do your part. This one kid is like the narc of the class. He's, (laughs) uh, I wasn't, gosh, I wasn't there. I think it was Monday. I don't, I think I was in a meeting on Monday and Jay was doing the class with him with the breakout rooms. Like he was just sitting there and He'll, he'll sit under the table he'll walk away he'll do other things and jay was like zach you got to do your thing and he like helped him with it so then yesterday the kid was like zachary you didn't do your problem yet what are you gonna have your dad do it for you again <gasps> i know and i was Zach's like it's not a narc he's a bully 
Well, I mean, he was right. <laughs> That's terrible. That's I mean. know. So, you know, Zach was on mute and I was like, he has a point. You need to do this. And, you know, the kids are like, we all have to get the problem correct. You have 58 seconds. The breakout room's going, Zach. And I was like, you heard them. You got 58 seconds. You better do this thing. So he does it. It's like pulling teeth and he does it just as it ends. And I don't know. It's it's you have to sit there with him, which is super annoying because my everything is here and he's yeah. right outside the door set up. And I thought that that would be OK. But you like literally need to sit set up next to him in order to get him to pay attention. Yeah, it's just like virtual is not a great. It is not model a model for a lot of kids and the way they learn no there's one and just listening like so that kid tells on everybody when they do it his poor teacher like there are kids that don't participate at all and she's always trying to get them to do it this one girl never turns on her camera this one girl um the only time she unmutes is when her mom interrupt like her mom asks a question in spanish and the teacher speaks it so she'll respond but like like that can't be easy for her to you know not hear the lesson with the rest of them right Mm -hmm. so it's just it's just a whole thing that like thank god they're going back to the classroom in two weeks because (laughs) it's tough it is really tough and i literally cried with joy when i saw that the board voted to try to send them back on the 15th i was like oh my god (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is better than sexy time. <laughs> I'm sure you and a lot of other parents. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> like hot water, him going back to school, sexy time. Yes, that order. was the order. <laughs> it was a That's night a legit full of, order. Yeah, it was a, a night order. full of pleasure, but <laughs> in the best order. <laughs> Anyway, does anybody else have anything? Really fast or really slow? Oh, it's going to go slow. <laughs> uh, does anybody else have anything? Um, I'm so sorry, I've been dominating the last few minutes. I put up some wallpaper. I that see. was like our, our big project of the weekend. Woohoo! Nice. That was pretty pretty fun. It's uh, the peel and stick kind. So, oh it, yes, yeah, it's a lot easier. Yeah. And you're officially in your third trimester now. Officially, yeah. Woohoo! Hope you're feeling well. (laughs) Yeah. Just tired and I can't breathe. Oh, yeah. The not breathing thing's not fun. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. It's stuffy. And I just have a bloody nose constantly. Yes. All the time. Ugh. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, That's fine. In the grand scheme of things, I have been doing a lot better. It could be a whole hell of a lot worse. I have been very, very fortunate. So. I do not feel at license to complain. I respect that. Yeah. But it, but you can complain if you want to. And you know that. There's a safe space. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. I'll think of something. But thankfully, yeah. Yeah. All's been good. I can't see my feet anymore. So, like, mm. that's kind of weird. Yeah. I that's... Like bend over to see my feet. Yeah, that's so a weird thing. That's sad. <laughs> um, okay. So, I had found a couple of things tonight. The first thing was... Uh, Reddit's it was an Ask Reddit. Um, I know, but it was visitors to America. <laughs> what was your favorite food experience? And I thought that was a nice little change up from, you know, the what was your shittiest American experience that we generally had. So, like your favorite food experience, like in in general, in America, in America, yeah. So okay. like for like for example, one of the answers is breakfast and diners. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah, exactly. Um, or somebody else was like, This sounds super trashy, but corn dogs. <laughs> I've grown to love them. I feel like corn dogs and hot dogs in general, I've gone on this ride of like loved them as a kid, found them disgusting <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Rediscovered them as like a thirty something year old and love them again. Yeah. Never, you know, they were never my thing. I know they were well, never your yeah. thing, but I've had similar, like, love hate relationships with, as Shandy. Like, sometimes I'm just in the mood for, like, hot, gross, and mustard, and yeah. <laughs> I want a hot dog. I'm like, that, is, yeah. Yeah, that what I get. I'm trying to think, like, what the, what, um, 
alternative. Yeah. It's like, cause yeah, hot and gross and mustard. That all sounds wonderful. It's, it is wonderful. I'm real sad that Costco has closed its food court that when we go there, we can't, you know, get uh, the, the ginormous, like super foot long hot dog and beverage for $1.50 anymore. <laughs> Maybe fried cheese, but that's not gross. Fried cheese is delicious. Fried cheese is amazing. Never had fried cheese. That's that's mozzarella sticks. Mozzarella sticks. Oh well, fried, but, yeah. fried cheese curd also very good. But there's like breading around it. Yeah, because it's yeah. fried. Because it's fried. Okay. Okay. Is this like a you cheesecake? If you didn't have the the breading, it would melt. See, that's what I was it. picturing, and that's why I was like, I've never had this. But melted cheese is also Mozzarella amazing. sticks, I will co-sign, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, okay, so another one. Came to New York as a child. Hotel served donuts for breakfast. Eight-year-old me lived like a king. <laughs> I love that this person came to America and was like, I will take all of your donuts. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think donuts might be my my food journey. Mm. I loved donuts as a kid. Then I was like kind of not into them. And now I'm back on back to donuts. Back on donut train? Huh. Specific donuts, though. Oh, like what? Yeah. I've always enjoyed a chocolate glaze. Mm. You know, classic. But like I like yeah. all those like bougie donuts. Yeah, the bougie you donuts. Know, like good. I don't get, get to your jelly, your regular frosted. Get out of here with those. Oh, you want the fancy too. ones with like the maple syrup curds on top? Oh, super! Yeah. <laughs> yeah <that's good. laughs> Next one is uh, biscuits and gravy. Mm. Uh, biscuit. Look, as somebody that moved to the south, that you know didn't get the biscuits and gravy thing. It took me several years, but like I get it now. It's real good, guys. <laughs> I mean, biscuits are delicious, but when you're not really a meat eater, gravy is. You know. But you can make the gravies not gravy like. Uh, you have on Thanksgiving. Well, it's usually it's sausage gravy, isn't it? Usually, it it's be, not like a traditional. So Jay and his family have always done sausage gravy, but it can be any kind of gravy you want. Hmm. Interesting. I do like uh, biscuits and hot honey. Ooh, which I think is like South adjacent. Mm. But mm-hmm. that's very good. Yeah. Interesting. I've had biscuits I like, maybe and marmalade. I haven't had like proper biscuits and gravy. Oh, next time you come here, we're going to we're not going to do sorry guys, we're not going to do the like first watch and and waffle house stuff. But the three of us can go we'll leave the children with the men and we'll go to and I mean and by that I mean Amanda, we can even leave your if Daniel's not here, we can leave your child with Jay and I'll leave <laughs> my children with Jack and Cindy. Um <laughs> <laughs> And never the never the two shall meet. It's a babysitting <laughs> chain. But like, I'm just saying, we can go with or without our children and significant others. But uh, I will take you to a place that has biscuits, biscuits and gravy. And the three of us can go and it'll be delicious. Just going to okay. out there. I'm into it. Um, uh, okay. Went to uh, Atlanta for New Year's last year. It sounds horrific, but was life changing. A fried chicken waffle. That's it. Fried chicken on top of a waffle. God bless the USA. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, hot honey there as well. Yeah. Ooh, Sometimes. It depends on everywhere. the mood. Because I've had the fried chicken waffle in like a wrap. Don't ask. And I thought the hot honey was going to be great because I've liked it like non-wrap wise. And it was kind of weird. So just, you know, be careful. Mm-hmm. You know, contemplate your hot honey place. <laughs> <laughs> just general words to live by <laughs> oh god hot water and hot honey hot honey water <laughs> but hot water before hot honey or after maybe maybe after both after. maybe my god how hot the honey is yeah <laughs> Uh, this person said pizza in Brooklyn in 2014, insanely good. I'm from France. Depends. Depends on where you go. But uh, it, 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 as a rule, yes, I agree. Uh, huge steaks. I shed a tear every time I think of the steaks in America. I miss them so much. 
Um, let's see. Mm-hmm. Barbecue. Yeah. That is that is a very American thing. That is a very American thing. But barbecue in the north is different than barbecue in the south because barbecue in the south yeah. is like pulled pork and all that. And barbecue in the north is hot dogs and hamburgers. But in the south, that's called a cookout, which was a very hard thing that I had to learn, adapt to. I still, you know, call it a barbecue and not a cookout because I refuse to call it other- otherwise. But <laughs> yeah. But even like North Carolina barbecue to – Texas barbecue to like Kansas City barbecue, like it all means something a little different. Yeah, that's true. I think they all involve a different animal. I'm not really certain. Is it about the sauces? I'm, again, from the north. No, and that's, so, and that's super familiar. Means of cooking, I think. Southern barbecue. You have an issue with the sauces <laughs> when when it's like southern because you have like vinegar based. Or vinegar based sauce vinegar based. or That's, meat. It's delicious. <laughs> it's really good. It's Most vinegar or something are, else are based. Vinegar based. Yeah. Like when I think, think of vinegar, vinegar, I think of vinaigrette. Mm. No, That's vinegar my vinegar based sauce. But if you buy like a, bar- a bottle of barbecue sauce from a, a grocery store, like if you check the ingredients, like vinegar is going to be very high up there. Interesting. I just, I don't really partake. I think I'm not saying I wouldn't like it. I could try it now, but it's never been appealing to me. So it's either like vinegar based. Idea. So Eastern North Carolina is vinegar and still trying to figure out the other one, which oh, mustard based, mustard based. Duh, I knew that. Mustard based. Mustard based yeah. is like Southern or, or Western. Yeah. And someone does dry rub where it's no I, sauce. It's just like the dry spices. Okay. I could be that 100% dirty to wrong. Me always. Rrr. Um, I could <laughs> the quickie rub. Yeah, I could be wrong, but like I don't, it's all delicious. I've lost my train of thought. I want to eat all the barbecue. This is sauce. Love white girls from the north talking about barbecue. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is really what people came to see. I know, I know. I was going to add that mustard is also kind of the base of vinaigrette sauce. But mm-hmm. Also, uh, I, I, yeah, I could be totally wrong. I just know that I love the vinegar based sauce, and I think the dry rub is more like southern, southern, like Texas, right? I don't know. I don't know. That could, yeah, that could be right. Let's just, uh, you know. Texas Southern Southern? Well, but Texas barbecue is isn't of itself its own. Yeah, it's, it's definitely its own thing. <laughs> um, somebody else said a Philly cheesesteak. Mm. Overrated. Sorry. Oh, That's no. where you go. Really? There's what? The, there's like the two big places in Philly. And I can't think of either one of their names. I can't either. I mean, again. But I've heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about things that are outside of my league. Yeah. When, will, when will this girl learn to stay in her lane? I know. Well, okay. So I've been to UPenn, so I've had, quite, I've had my fair share of, of Philly cheesesteaks. And I think the first time I loved it. And then the second time I was like, this is very greasy. Mm, yeah. I think that's the part I love so much about it. But I think, yeah, <laughs> I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> Uh, okay, I was just to to uh, you know Amanda and I have embarrassed ourselves enough, so he, let's just who who can embarrass themselves more? I know Bo Radley on tw- on uh, Reddit. This is probably going to make Americans nauseous, but me and my family went to Orlando when I was a kid, and the standout experience for me was going to the Golden Corral. I loved it so much that I've always wanted to go back. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Mm. I've never been to one, and I, I don't feel like uh, I'm missing out. Yeah. Uh, and then to finish up, because there's a whole lot here, but uh, it's the finish up clam chowder and lobster bisque, both served in a bread bowl uh, mm. in Quincy Market in Boston. That is an experience. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I've done that. Yeah. I, I feel like that's probably not the best chowder you're going to get. In Boston, but it is an experience to go and do that in Quincy Market in the bread bowl. Like that is that is a scene not to be missed. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I don't know. I'm a sucker for lobster bisque. I love lobster yeah. bisque. <laughs> and then okay, one more. Girl Scout cookies. Came to America from Finland in the mid nineties and my God, they were great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to figure out how to get my my hands on some Girl Scout cookies this year. Now that we're not in an office, yeah, I usually like order them through like my coworker. I don't have a Girl Scout ho- cookie hookup this year. Is there anyone in your building or your? Oh yeah, yeah. Man- Mandy. Mandy, this and is Elena. important. Do you ship out of state? I'm sure she would. Oh man, 
I need some Girl Scout cookies. What you guys? Is, have we talked about this? Your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Probably, but I could talk about it all day. <laughs> okay, what I've is never it? really. I mean, I've I have eaten Girl Scout cookies in my lifetime, but but not so much that I can even remember what any of them are. Amanda, sorry, I know you remember. Go for it. Yep, thin mints, cold in the fridge, mm. tagalongs, mm. samoas. All three of my favorites as well, actually. Exactly. And they alternate as to which one is the favorite. Very true. <laughs> very true. They do. I love uh, them all equally for very different reasons. Yes. And depending on my mood, I'm really in the mood for those shortbread ones. Just depending, like, in the morning. They're sometimes they're kind of pinch, but, like, they're, you know. They're, I don't know. Like, in the morning, if I'm having coffee, I, I either want a do si mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. one of the shortbread ones. Just because they go great with coffee. It's like a Biscoff, but, like, in my mouth in the morning and not on a plane. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it, okay. As a breakfast cookie. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. Fair enough. All right. Um, <laughs> the other thing that I had that we could uh, say for next week was uh, I really love this, actually. And it was uh, readers share their airport love stories ahead of Valentine's Day. And it, it was sparked Ooh. by a story that Mayor Pete Buttigieg told about how he proposed to Chastin in an airport terminal. In oh, so we're talking about like love connections in an airport, not people's love for a specific airport <laughs> right love connections in an airport okay because when you first said that i was that i was thinking like do people really have that strong opinions about <laughs> the airport <laughs> well i mean, I mean to each is their own right like, if you travel a lot i suppose you would form attachments right. to certain airports at one yeah. point <laughs> yes yeah. so uh for the sake of time I will either say this till the end if we get through feedback quickly, or we can do it next week. But I re- I read through this the other night while I was putting Zach to sleep, and I was like, these are all so sweet. We have to read these for Valentine's Day. Oh, great. Yeah. I love it. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a quick break. We'll get into feedback. And if we have time at the end, we'll read these. Otherwise, we will 100% read this, uh, uh, do these next week for our Valentine's Day episode. So, okay. Quick break right here. All right, we are back and we are ready to take uh take up take up with some take in some drinking drinking some hot water feedback. Um, <laughs> Sorry with the facey back. John, the UPS guy, says not that she's asking, but please tell Amanda that John is a good name if the baby is a boy. It is a, a good classic. name. It is a classic. It's a classic name. It is. Uh, he also says, this is an actual package I had for delivery last week, only in San Francisco, and it is to penis at 750 Harrison <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> I mean, you don't call all your friends penis? Seriously. I mean, I address things to grandma and grandpa and papa and Gigi when we mail them. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so why not penis? Why not? Maybe, maybe it's addressed to pen 15. Oh. Oh, Maybe. Oh, I like your thinking. Mm. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, seriously, though, I'm very impressed. And actually, the purchase order is... I know. You're... <laughs> the best part, go ahead. 0127 penis. Or <laughs> 0127 pen 15. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, okay. Knowing this, my theory is whoever this was was like us. They ordered it. Their purchase order number was this, and they were like, "Holy shit, this is too great of opportunity to pass up. I've got to label this to Venus, right? Believe in the numbers, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it would on, actually, man. it's awesome. Um, you know what the best part would be if this package was to somebody named like Paul Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably the most likely scenario, right? <laughs> if that's the case, then damn, his parents. Yeah, Ooh, I should have thought about that. Yeah, they were not. When your kind. last name's Ennis, you got to really think through. Yeah, what is Amanda, your job as a parent, <laughs> take note. I wanted, you know, I wanted a vag, but like you can avoid a Paul Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Love it. 
<laughs> See, but I love that. I, I would have definitely gotten behind that. Yeah. Oh, good times. I mean, not that I have any say in, in any of that, but. Uh, I, open book. I would have cheered you on. Yeah. I'm open to you. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Alex now, though, is even better. We go, Alex, what's your name? And he was like, Alexander Hamilton Glatfilter Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> without fail you ask that child his name and that is what he says his name is alexander hamilton glatfelter thomas and we're like all right nice. I feel like that's, yeah that's it's like a long, a yeah superhero or something right we're making it work <laughs> you could legally change it someday it's pretty badass <laughs> yeah, all right well mr p enos i hope you get your package <laughs> I hope it was a, a delightful package. Uh, we might have to call this hot water for P. Enos. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving into the message, she said. <laughs> Sorry, we got a little bit of a late start tonight. That was my fault, but you heard that whole thing beforehand. <laughs> You know, you know, sometimes you want hot water, okay? Sometimes, you know. <laughs> oh, dear. I think I came off kind of hot on it. I feel like I have a whole new mouth. <laughs> you know, they say Mentos. Sometimes it's just hot water instead of the Mentos. Mimics a vagina. <laughs> it's like mouthwash commercial or. Uh, you keep your mask on for the whole thing. There were videos like that in Hump. Oh, well, that's good. Sign of the times, you know? Looking oh, Not those masks, looks. actually, but although that would have been funny. Oh. Mm-hmm. I was expecting a little bit more COVID, but. Right. That's, I would have thought, I feel like there's so much, like, fodder there. Yeah. yeah. There is, but, like, is it too soon to make COVID sex sexy? Or is it too overdone at this point? Like, we've. <laughs> Yeah, we've lamented it long enough. Can we just like fantasy land it? I wonder. I don't know. Oh, it, yeah. it, it, go food for thought. Exactly. Hot water for drinking. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, where 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 were we? I'm glad. Um, I'm glad. Wait, is this me? Am I next? No, it's me. Oh shit! I, think. I like the next one. Go ahead. Well, you can take it. Do you no, want no, 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 no. I I'm not, I don't roll like that. Okay. Okay. I'm glad you have a clean mouth. It's not even juicy. It's just ridiculous. (laughs) Keep going down the alphabet. You'll get there. (laughs) I don't think you're going to get it. This was the perfect way to end that. (laughs) Now you've killed my flow. (laughs) Did you have to reach for that hot water? (laughs) Did you have to reach? You couldn't have waited just like five seconds. If only it was hot wax. <laughs> oh my god, water guys, it's like my new favorite thing. <laughs> oh dear, nothing wrong with that. Ask oh. me in July. Yeah, I suppose it's a seasonal delight. <laughs> seasonal delight. <laughs> seasonal delight. Uh, once you're done with it, it's great. I guess I have an overreacting gag flex, but that's very challenging for me. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> the dentist is challenging. <laughs> I think seasonal delight is also in the uh, <laughs> choice. In the running? In the running. It's in the running. It's in the multiple seasonal choice. <laughs> delight. Seasonal delight. <laughs> Which actually, you know, really actually works on multiple levels. Spoiler, I'm going to ruin it now by explaining it. But like seasonal <laughs> for the season, but afternoon delight for the sexy time. So it really does work quite well. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even, yeah. Layers, Sometimes man. the best things just come off the top of your head if you just don't think about it too hard. Or explain it too hard. But there we go. No, no, I, would, I, 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 I needed that explanation because that wasn't 
It wasn't a thought I had in my head. You just added a whole extra layer. Who knows? We were out only there halfway there, so thank you for you're getting welcome. us all the way. Oh, there. you're welcome. Yeah. You're really welcome. got us over the finish line. Yeah. You're welcome. I was just thinking of Arrested Development where they are singing Afternoon Delight and then realize the lyrics as it yes. comes along. So good. Second Arrested <laughs> Development reference tonight. That's very solid. I yeah. You I know it's a good this. episode when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, moving into butter emails, we have two voicemails from Maggie. So let's get uh, to the first one. Uh, here we go. Hey, Amanda, Shandy, and Colleen, it's Maggie. Um, I'm, a, I'm like a record for like three weeks in a row of feedback. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Okay, not a bad thing. To be clear, I always, always, always recommend reading the books after a show, but I do understand that not everyone does that. So, um, Amanda and Shandy. Yes, you should read them. They are super fun. Um, they're not difficult reads. They're like they're like 400 pages, but they're small. Like it's a small kind of book, and it's not you know. And they're romance novels, so they're like candy. <laughs> I mean, um, if you do read them, um, I would not read the second epilogue until you have read all eight books. Um, just a FYI, um, you there would be spoilers for other books. I mean and stuff so um, huh. do not read them um so yes um and uh, oh colleen i will write that thing up because i was going to write it anyway about all the books and i will send it to you and if anybody else wants it let me know and the other thing i was going to say uh, ask if you ladies have watched wandavision um no not everybody's a super um marvel fan or superhero fan but wandavision has been really fun um i've only seen the first three episodes so far but Elizabeth Olsen is amazing as Wanda. It's very interesting. Um, and there, so there's been three episodes. The first one was like a 50s um, sitcom, like the Dick Van Dyke show. The second one was like a 60s um, sitcom, so like I Love Lucy. And then what was, what was, and then it was the 70s, and I'm not sure if it was supposed to be Brady Bunch or something else. But they're definitely very cool there's definitely something weird going on that you don't know what's going on and you're like what is going on and i can't figure it out but i'm totally all in and i can't wait to watch more so um i think everybody should watch wandavision if they're not okay i'll talk to you later later bye 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 okay i'm gonna play the second one and then we can respond to both okay hey amanda shandy and colleen um i thought of something that i forgot to say the other day when i called So last week's episode, you were talking about basically why we can't have nice things (laughs) in America, like, you know, um, health insurance paid for by the government and that sort of stuff. And I had a thought this weekend that I wanted to share with you that I think we've been, like, taught to have a scarcity mindset with something, that there's not enough. Um, You know, there's not enough money, there's not enough time, there's not enough land or whatever. You know, there's not enough room for everybody. And when honestly there is, and so we just have to kind of realize that there is, there is enough. We just have to kind of allow it and let it happen. If that's making any sense at all, it made more sense in my head. (laughs) Hopefully it's making some sense. But I think it's sort of, and I'm guilty of this, you know, the, oh, I don't have enough time to do that. Well, yeah, I do. I have plenty of time. I just choose not to or do something else instead. Hopefully that's making sense. And if not, I'm just rambling. And so um hope everybody's doing well. And um Amanda, hopefully you're staying warm and didn't get a whole lot of snow. Um we got some snow and I think you guys got snow, Colleen. And Shandy, I know you didn't get snow. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, true. no snow um, for Shandy. Happy Groundhog Day, ladies. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I didn't get snow. We got like an inch of snow and it melted. Hmm. Which, oh, last week. Not even, like, uh, this snowstorm. Checking down. Maggie, thank you for those voicemails. There's so much that I wrote down to talk about listening to them. Um, Bridgerton, anybody got anything? Again, I'm, like, 40 pages into the Barack Obama book. Um, so once I finish <laughs> that, then... <laughs> you're going to be a while, is what so you're saying. <laughs> what you're saying is you'll be able to read all the appendixes by the time you get to them. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not. I mean, this is like, you know, it's, he's a good writer. It's really interesting. 
Well, he's um, he's just as verbose in writing as he was his speaking. <laughs> yes. He even talks about it in the book, how, like, he had to try to cut back because he had so much to say. <laughs> so I cut back to 700 pages. Yeah. Um, no, it's, be, it's, it's, yeah. Nice. Um, Juan did but, it. Yeah, again. I'll get on that train afterwards. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would like to, I would still like to read them too. I, I actually do as well. Like, I, yeah. I, I keep saying there's so many books I want to read. I just, I get so distracted and I know I need to make a lifestyle change to do that. And like, I, if I can do dry January and not complain this year, I, cause it really wasn't that bad at all this year. If, if I can do that, then I feel like I can, you know, read books. <laughs> there was, um, there was a life kit episode on how to read more books. I will send okay. that to you. Ooh, okay. I would actually like that too. Cause I find as a slow reader, I only get through like a couple pages a night and that's really, you know, that's just not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> um, WandaVision. I've, I'm caught up on WandaVision. The first two episodes, I. I have to say, you are too? I am as well, yes. Okay. But you've never watched, Have you, you haven't watched all the movies, right? I've seen enough of them. Like I've seen all the Avengers movies okay. and I think I've, I've seen... 85 percent of okay. like oh, that first totally cycle good. of marvel movies okay um i mean if you haven't seen the thor movies you totally don't need to right now i saw ragnarok ragnarok was, was, was actually really great, <laughs> great. <laughs> i'm really excited for the next one if it's just yeah. like ragnarok is awesome the second thor Dude, movie sucks but taika yeah. waititi is a damn good filmmaker yeah. i yeah. freaking love his stuff he's so great yeah yeah agreed um, but yeah, so WandaVision, um, I will admit I wasn't super into the first two, but like the third episode and the fourth episode, I was hooked. And every day this week so far, and it's only Tuesday, I've been like, what, what day does WandaVision come out? When does WandaVision come out? I can't wait to watch the next WandaVision. Like it's gotten really great. Um, it's just, really I know it's, it is really good. So totally with you there. And Elizabeth Olsen, I can't believe that she is the little girl the little like five-year-old who like asked her sisters to build her a mystery in the mary K- adventures of mary Kay and ashley one of which was with cloris leachman as the evil witch who rest in peace just died um R.I.P. yeah we lost some some pretty uh amazing ladies this week but oh my God. Oh my- we also lost the actor who played screech Oh, right. Dustin yeah, Dustin Diamond, Diamond. Diamond died of oh. cancer three weeks after being ni- diagnosed. That's just, yeah. I mean, he's 44. Awful. Uh, oh, good screened, folks. I know. Oh, God. Uh, <sighs> but yes, but WandaVision. Yes, WandaVision, great. And Elizabeth Olsen is fantastic in it. Remember, uh, like, two years ago when I played the Building a Mystery theme song from The Adventures of Mary-Kate and Ashley? Nope. Oh no, you do not! Oh my God! Super no, you don't. For you, you have I none. Super don't. But I'm actually I'm surprised you didn't enjoy the first two episodes. I I personally loved the first two episodes, but we also watched a ton of Nick at Night as a kid. So I did like too. Bewitched and like I Dream of Jeannie and like Marilyn Tyler Moore, like all that stuff was that's like. I really, really enjoy that stuff. So no, I think no, no. that's why I loved those first two episodes. No, so and much. I did they were too. Such a good, a well. They were just so well crafted, and they felt like really authentic to those and, era. Sitcoms. And I, I totally agree with that too. I totally agree. I was looking like I heard there's so many Easter eggs, there's so many this and that. Like so, I thought it was like a little bit different. And I'm actually, I have, am going to go back and rewatch the first two episodes because, yeah. I, like, I, I know there's a lot more going on then because I did a lot of like eye rolling and I loved all those things too. Like I taped Monster Mondays and Bewitched Be Wednesdays and I drew a Genie Tuesdays and I know, right? Like I had all those too. So, you know, now I kind of regret being kind of impatient with it, but I am really upset that you guys don't remember when like two years ago we played this. So <laughs> now fuck you both. I'm play. sorry, just think of that sentence for a minute. I am really upset that you didn't remember this video clip I played you two years ago. It was a Tuesday at like 7.42. Well, the I'm thing so is, <laughs> the thing is, Amanda, you listening and reacting to this song closed out our bloopers one year, okay? Okay, ready? 
We're going to start this, and you guys are going to be like, oh my God, I remember this. Anyway, Elizabeth Olsen was in this. So the Great Hope Diamond, what killed the dinosaurs? Who makes the finest pizza? What's in your brother's dresser drawers? <laughs> Mystery. I know, right? Spoiler alert, it's porn. Blood <laughs> screaming to be solved. Here we stand in our trench coat. I have no recollection. First class, class private, private eyes. eyes. Figure outers, clearer uppers. Mr. Reese of disguise. We got the know-how. We got the knack. Now all we need to case, case the to crack. Work. We're super, super, super snoopers. Build us a mystery. What is the Loch Ness Monster? What is a cherry on top? Where is Amelia Earhart? Very deep questions. <laughs> okay, and you know something? Very deep questions. Fuck you, Amanda, because in the bloopers, it literally ends with them going, Where is Amelia Earhart? And then it cuts to you going, That's a very deep question. Where is Amelia Earhart? <laughs> It's a thing. I am nothing if not consistent. You are consistent. You are consistent because that is a thing that has and did happen. Okay. I'm sure, no, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I just have no recollection of it. I don't doubt it happened. <laughs> <laughs> They think they found Amelia Hurt. Google it, though. We don't have time now, okay? <laughs> We're already running long. We have to keep going. We're building a mystery! <laughs> anyway, I can't... That Elizabeth Olsen... Of, what is that? Is that an Enya song? It's like, building a mystery. No, that's Sarah, Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin. Thank you. That's the song that has the uh, fellatio reference in it, right? Uh, that... Maybe. Mm, I don't know. Mind. I don't know. As a seventh grader, you know, it was one of those things you remember. well proven that my memory is not to be trusted. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm right there with you. If anybody else you said there, it, it's like, it's like a, there, there's like a tiny, the tiniest bit of a memory of like, I should remember this, but, okay. but I don't. Listen, anybody out there listening right now, can you please, please tell me that my efforts are not in vain? And you either remember a bonus show for the patrons, which this might have been part of that, but it was 100% also a part of the bloopers. Do you remember this, please? Because they would make me feel a lot better. <laughs> it turns out it was all just a dream. It wasn't just a dream. Okay. You know something? I am going to pull this up while we do our, our Andy update and play it as it's done, okay? Just to prove my point. <laughs> anyway, WandaVision's great. Elizabeth Olsen is really, she's very fantastic in it. Like, oh, she's so good. She's, she's so good. So good in it. Um, is it only on Disney Plus? Yes. Yeah. Um, so check it out. The reveal in episode four, we didn't see it coming until right when it happened. And that was when Jay was like, isn't that blah, blah, blah? And I was like, oh, my God, you're right. That's blah, blah, blah. And then, like, you know, we Googled it to to confirm it. And we felt really smart that we guessed it a whole, like, 50 seconds. Nah, 20 seconds before they, like, confirmed it. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we oh, got it. Now- we got it before the dialogue was, like, in your face. This is who this person is. <laughs> oh, now I feel like I, I need to – I need the spoiler for that. Because again, because yeah, it's like it's been a while since I've seen any Avengers movies, so like a lot of the Easter eggs go over my head. Um, and then she talks about her second her second voicemail, the scarcity mindset, and like you know, not enough and all that. Um, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we've got a lot to say about this topic. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I like I totally get what Maggie's saying. Um, I think it's like I think maybe there are elements of that, but I think that mostly it's a desire not to share and not even share with others, but not to let others have nice things too. And so instead of, 
instead of us having nice things and like, you know, other people who are not like us also having nice things, we just burn it all down. I think it's kind of that. And that's rough because I don't know how to fix that. Mm-hmm. Right. It's that rugged individualism that we've been taught. But from. that's more than individualism. It's like, exactly. it's like because you don't look like me or worship like me or come from the same background as me, I don't want you to have nice things. Like that's right. fucked up. Well, and, and to Maggie's point, and I would agree with it because I think there is, there is some element of feeling threatened by someone other having the same things you do, because I, I I would agree. I think there is this thought that like by someone else being able to get equal to you, that you then have to give up something in order for that right. to happen. And I, I, I think there is a bit of that baked into, you know, the, the white male patriarchal society, societal model. Yeah. And I think actually it's interesting because just like you're saying, I mean, we've said this before that like to somebody who who is privileged, equality can feel like oppression. I mean, they think it's oppression. Um, Obviously it's not, but I think that that points to just like you were saying, Amanda, people on the top thinking that allowing other people to also have nice things, it like sort of confirms that they prefer to have more like they say that they're okay with equality but really they prefer to have more because if they're really scared that equality is going to have them have less it's like they're afraid that a new system will actually put them in the place of where other people are now Mm -hmm. but i think people are saying we don't want your system at all right and part of me wonders if on some subconscious level that the thinking that there is a recognition that you already have too much and that you're, you, you are somehow being caught out by other people then getting more to be equal that like mm-hmm. you're, you're aware that the system is unfair yeah, and, and, you don't, and, and you just don't want to give it up. Like you recognize it's yeah. like a little kid when they try and hide something yeah. that they know is wrong and they shouldn't be doing and they're going to get in trouble. So they hide it because they're aware what they're doing is wrong, but not enough to not do the action. Like, right. I, and I then, feel like there's, there's a, there's a similar connection there. 100%. And I think like as a culture, then we also, the, you know, the like dominant, like white culture then uh, really pushes this myth of, you know, bootstraps and, you know, to it. That's when we get back to the, you know, that idea of the rugged individualism, where as actually, um, sorry, libertarians, nobody gets where they are by themselves. Like there, there are no bootstraps here. People work hard. Yes, but it's not, it's not that narrative, but we push that myth because then it allows the people who do have the things to feel like, even though subconsciously, they probably, like you said, Amanda, know that they did something wrong, but they can cover it up and sort of compensate for it with this myth that we have in the U S um, and other places too. But like, we really push it hard here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that lets them then, you know, feel better about themselves. Like they I, earned it. I think yeah. that it's just another way of, it's a very sneaky un universally recognized way of class warfare. Yeah. 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 Well, I worked hard for this, even though I had a leg up from the person below me, or even if I didn't have a leg up for the person below me, I got lucky. And that's the one thing that I think that people don't always realize is when it comes to being successful, you either have an advantage, which is great, amazing, good for you. That's awesome. We all want an advantage. That is fine. That is totally fine. Just acknowledge it. Or... You know, you have some kind of leg up in general, but you have to recognize that doesn't make you better than somebody else just because your life circumstances put you in a a situation that so you shouldn't want somebody else to succeed less than you or to work as hard as you. It's that whole, it's that like a thing like with student debt right now, you know, we have people that are freaking out that like, why should we forgive student debt? I paid off all my loans. Well, you know something? 
Good I had you. two cousins Congrats. in my family. What a I, great achievement. And that's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I had two people in my family die of COVID a week apart. They were married. They were my dad's cousins. I don't think anybody should get the COVID vaccine because they died of it. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's a, if you spent, you know, if you spent a long time paying back your student loans and because of the timing, you know, you, you don't end up like, you know, potentially getting this benefit that like, really, I, I am not holding my breath for, but it would be amazing. Um, then I can understand a little bit of a frustration of like, oh shit, you know, I spent 10 years of my life doing it, whatever. But <laughs> why should that mean that somebody else exactly get that mm-hmm. like i just think that's a shitty opinion it, i know right. it's just a way a different it's, way it's of selfish life. it's yeah it's inconsiderate it's it's like you of all people this you know fictitious person that we're talking about who uh <laughs> paid off their student loans but right doesn't want people like, to have loan forgiveness it's like you of all people should understand the burden that student loan debt and is. you shouldn't want it for your fellow american exactly. and not mm-hmm. because you know, like you, you, because those are all those people that are preaching on the internet. Like education is the most important thing. If you don't go to college, you shouldn't deserve a high paying job. And then like they're the ones that don't want the people to go to college, even if they didn't get a high paying job because there's not enough around to like, yeah. you know, pay the difference. Like okay, um, I'm looking at my list right now. We are Jay has two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars left on his student loans, and we are done. I know. Oh my god. Congratulations. That's, oh, so, that's so great. Thank you. Very excited, right? But if somebody, if like they forgave student loans up to like $10,000 and we weren't included in that today, okay, whatever. Good for everybody else. Like, I'm not going to be mad. I'm not going to say that sucks. Yeah. Oh, that well, sucks. Well, I don't have more it. debt that you I have in very accruing. It sucks. And like, it's unfortunate that you couldn't take advantage of it. But it's just the idea. It's the concept of like, just because you can't have it, no one else can. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Like that's like, we're not going to be like, oh, my God, I wish. Yes. Do we wish that they did this 10 years ago? Sure. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> as I'm sure lots of people wish that. But it didn't happen and it didn't happen because a lot of, you know, there are a lot of factors which we, we've been into. We don't need to get back into them. So why don't we not sit for another 10 years and why don't we make it better for everybody else coming forward? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the scarcity mind. It's, it's, it's like a badge of honor, right, in America with a scarcity mindset to be like, I went without for blah, blah, blah. And it's like, couldn't it have been great to like not have to do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's what, I just think like, like the style of the style of like our economic system our leadership everything is under this like hierarchical competitive patriarchal system and obviously it's better with somebody like biden and super exacerbated by somebody like trump but even so like there's just so much wrong with the system itself and what we really need is a more cooperative style of society and if we could cultivate cooperation and empathy for others, then we wouldn't have these issues. Right. And we need to get into that mindset of mm-hmm. like, like there's so many people out there and I'm so sorry if this offends you, but there's so many people out there that like claim they're Christians. But mm-hmm. if you were yeah. to hear that, like this would, you know, help the poor, you'd be like, well, they didn't earn it. The poor didn't earn it. I'm pretty sure that when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, he wasn't like, Asking them to fill out a questionnaire before about like how much they had. Worked. <laughs> right. It's like, how much did you earn last year? And how, so what now? Yeah. The 5,000 and first person. It's like, oh, sorry. You just, you don't work hard enough for it. Sorry, buddy. You're out. Right. Exactly. And, I, and it's just so, it's just, yeah, it's so, it's unchristian. It's unkind. It's just really shitty. Like everyone's, uh, people's attitude towards the poor. And it reminds me of an article that I was reading today about the cognitive load of poverty. And like people are more productive. Like literally they measured it. You're more productive when you're less strapped for cash. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's just, again, there's, a, you know, there's so many reasons why people are poor and there's so many reasons why it's so difficult to get out of poverty also. Right. Right. And like, right. Why, why I don't know. It's not about being lazy. Like, Maybe you could just mm-hmm. give people the bootstraps. Or being a bad person. Right. It's just being caught in a cycle that you can't yeah. get yourself out of because the system is set up so that it keeps yeah, in the cycle. Exactly. 
And I look, it's expensive to be poor. Like you it can't, is. you can't get the cheaper price because you buy in bulk or because you buy a year's membership instead of month to month because you can't front that money. So yeah. you pay more than people who are rich. Like the whole, yeah, it's just, it's mm-hmm. so wrong. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Maggie, so much. We appreciate it. Uh, If anybody has anything they want to contribute to this discussion, as always, feel free. The broadcasters3 at gmail.com or 331 276 2373. We're going to end this show with an Andy update. Here we go. All right. Andy writes in this week in Andy's virginity. Hey, Broads. So I was watching this week's SNL and then just happened to also make a man from Nantucket reference. While I'm not big on the universe, maybe that was it softening the blow of my man from Man Nantucket joke flopping on last week's show. <laughs> As you can probably guess, no news on that front. We're getting close to a year of the shutdowns and social distancing, so I've gotten a little used to it. It still sucks. I could definitely relate to your conversation about our generation's difficulty achieving milestones that were easier than previous ones. When my parents were my age, they were parents and homeowners for several years, and my dad's job could easily provide for us. Not so much for me now. The last number I heard for a cost of the hospital visit to give birth alone would be a little less than half of what I make in a year. I'm priced out of a lot of those things. Holy shit. Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. I Side note, what I was referencing last week was these x-rays that I got and when I saw, of course, I didn't pay the full price because I do have insurance, thank God. But um, when I compared the actual cost of the x-rays to the actual cost of x-rays in France, they are 10 times more expensive here. 10 times, oh just goodness. add a zero. Yeah. 10 fucking times. So cool. And so it's even so with my insurance coverage, I still paid more for insurance covered cost than I would have paid had I paid like the, had I just walked in and paid in France, like completely out of pocket. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I hear you, Andy. Um, and it complicates uh, things with me and dating and seeing women in their thirties who don't have kids and still want them. Okay. Maybe I'm getting too far ahead of myself since I have such a hard time even getting a response back, much less anything that would lead to a baby, but it is a part of my thought process since we don't know what the next woman could bring. Maybe this is just more of me being intimidated being uh, so inexperienced from anyone in my age group. And maybe I just need to chill out since nothing will probably happen while we're still spending most of our time apart anyway. Well, that's where my head is at now. Sorry, I don't have a good joke to end on, but I will wish Colleen a very happy birthday. Thank you. We've all been through enough, quote unquote, this thing this year is going to be a little different than than the year past so hopefully this is the first and last birthday you have to go through like this hashtag i'm six feet from hers andy that's true though the february people didn't really get a quarantine birthday so we were the last of them we're just hitting up everybody yeah it was um my like the last party that we had was my birthday party last year and it's funny because like we were still i mean it was end of february but we were still like pretty just totally chill and within a couple of weeks, everyone was shut down. Yeah. And sheltered in place. Yeah. yeah. It escalated quickly. It, yeah. it really did. <laughs> it really did. Um, it is really weird. Uh, Zachary the other day was like, oh, I miss hibachi. Because I bought yum yum sauce to, because we make chicken and rice every so often. And, you know, we used to do hibachi for like every big thing, right? And we haven't mm. done it since. Oh my god! I don't even know. I don't. I what? I don't even remember what we did for my birthday last year. We probably did hibachi, but I don't remember. And he he mentioned it because we had yum yum sauce with chicken and rice, and he was like, "I miss it." And I was like, "I know, buddy. I wish that we could have it. Like, I miss it, no, uh, ma'am." I was I didn't telling Tabachi until you just said it. Now yeah. it's all in the best. <laughs> I was telling Jake because I was asking Alex. I was like, "What do you want for your birthday? We can have anything that you want, like whatever you want." And he was like, I want chicken nuggets from the grocery store. And I was like, we have that all the time. Let's pick something different. I was like, what about Chick-fil-A? And he was like, no, grocery store. And I was like, what about PDQ? He was like, maybe PDQ. And I was like, okay. So, well, I was like, we'll workshop this. And But then I was thinking to... <laughs> I'm telling Jay, I was like, okay, so I want sushi from here, I want flatbread from here, and I want blah, blah, blah from here. I forget the last thing I said. I was like, let's just do like a smorgasbord of my birthday. 
Mm. Oh, that sounds great. Right? Like, mm-hmm. let's just do like curbside to go from three different places, four different places. Oh, my let's God. Just, yes. I'll take that off. I'll drive great. around, pick it up myself. Yeah. <laughs> You're a genius. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've had a year yeah. to think about this. <laughs> I'll keep you posted next week. Well, oh, man. I'm just now I'm just thinking about hibachi. I know. I can't think about food, like especially salty food. I'm very salty hungry right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to have a snack one before I go to bed. <laughs> I secret bought Cheetos to put <laughs> My car the other day because they're oh, not. Oh no! Now you said che- Oh gosh! Why did you say Cheetos? <laughs> I did, no. oh. but they're not Weight Watchers friendly, so I didn't want to have to log them, and I didn't. <laughs> I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> but I also put them in the car, like hid them in like the so my like glove compartment on the passenger side has like multiple like things. I think it's like to hide your wallet or something. But I put the I put the Cheetos in there and. Mm-hmm. All tonight, even when we were on break, I was thinking, like, how much do I want to eat the snacks that I want to go outside <laughs> and get my secret Cheetos? Oh, secret Cheetos. I know. That would also be a good episode title. Ooh, secret Cheetos. Secret Cheetos. <laughs> I can't because that would blow up my spot. <laughs> True. Respect. True. Because you know why Jay would see the title post and he would be like, Oh, you have secret Cheetos, do you? <laughs> I'm like, how do you know that Amanda, Amanda's pregnant? How do you know that she doesn't have secret Cheetos? And he'd be like, I know you have secret Cheetos. Because <laughs> I don't need to have secret Cheetos. I could just have Cheetos everywhere. Pretty much. <laughs> no one would judge me. <laughs> I'd be like, I know it was you. I'm like, damn it. I haven't cause... been outside in three days, but tomorrow I'm going out and getting Cheetos. <laughs> Well, this one time in the summer, I bought secret Fritos and I had them in the same compartment. And Jay was cleaning up my car over Christmas to like be really kind to, for us to like drive up. And he was like cleaning it out and vacuuming and all that. And he found the secret Fritos and they were kind of, you know, like stale at that point because I didn't finish them. But he was like, I'm sorry. Why do you have Fritos? I have Fritos in here. And I was like, because they're my favorite more than anything else in the world, Fritos. <laughs> I'm sorry. You aren't allowed to judge me. <laughs> my car, my stand. Exactly. <laughs> when I was Frito shaved. <laughs> and I still remember it. But clearly I didn't learn because I put the secret free, the secret Cheetos in the exact same spot. <laughs> this is your uh, Mary Kate and Ashley song. <laughs> Creature of habit, you know? Okay. Actually, speaking of that, before we go, I just want to play this one thing. Here we go. Okay. Okay. This is the end of the bloopers from the second one. 4.5 from, I don't know, whatever point. I'll tell you in a second. Okay. July 31st, 2019. I do like you're pausing, like on the beat. Mm-hmm. I'm doing that. that. <laughs> <It's a pretty laughs> <lofty> question: <laughs> Where is Amelia Earhart? <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> Some point in 2019, we played that clip. <laughs> anyway, on that note, everybody, thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the feedback. If you'd like to give us some feedback, you to you can email us. Um, the broadcasters three at gmail.com or you can give us a call at 331-276-2373. We love feedback. We also have a um Facebook page that you can search for us. It's in the fa- it's in the show notes um to find the exact link, but it's a broadcast with Amanda Shandy and Colleen. Uh we're the broadcast three on Instagram and Twitter, I believe. And yeah. Um thank you for being a patron. If you'd like to be a patron, you can- you know, patreon.com slash Jane Jack to become a patron. We do bonus shows uh, once a month. We do um, a live show for the Hangout Level patrons every month. Um, we try to, the network in general, like, offers all these things. So we try to do that. And, yeah, thank you to the patrons that contribute to a certain level. And that we, uh, Eckhart Rickner, Tack from Tokyo, Greg the Gray, Maggie the Magnificent, uh, Joanne with a Plan, and Ed the Creepy Mailman. Thank you guys so much. We super appreciate it. 
All right. Well, um, if nobody else has anything, thank you guys so much for listening. As always, we appreciate it. We will see you next week. And yeah, my name is Colleen. My name is Amanda. And I'm Shandy. Peace out, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.